baseline. Hey YouTube, so we're going to talk today about the new Race Flight Revolt flight controller. This is the version 2 and I'm going to go over some details with you about what they changed from the version 1 to the version 2 and then uh, I'm also going to show you how to set it up. So let's get started. So this is the new V2 Revolt. As you can see, you actually have, there's a documentation website called revoltfc.com that you can go to. And there are step-by-step -step instructions on that website that really help you set it up. Here's what you get in the package. <clears throat> this is the version 2, so it comes with the gummies. And if you can tell, these gummies are made to fit into these holes. Now, as you can see, this one's got the gold USB plug which you know that adds about 15 miles per hour to your racing drone um, it's got the F405 chip the Invincence 20602 uh, gyro this is your uh, UART side for your receivers and if you can tell here this is the version 1 and it's got one inverter on it this one has two so that's the first major change uh, well, it's, it's really a minor change. So if you flip these over, you can see that there's, on the original version 1, there's two uh, bridge pad locations for power. But on this one, there's two bridge locations for power, but there's also two invert locations. The two power bridges remain the same. You either bridge the 5 volt and the VCC uh, for 5 volts or you bridge the 3 volts and the VCC for 3 volts. These two additional pads right here are the invert TX and normal pads. So you have INV for invert, then you have NOR for normal, and then you have either TX4 or TX1. Now if you're using the beta build code then you can only use TX1 for inverter. What you'll do is you'll just invert uh, or you'll solder and bridge together the invert and the TX1 pad to enable the inverter on this line. Now in RF1, it doesn't matter which UART you use because it automatically detects it. If you want, you can actually bridge TX1 and normal and hook up your spectrum receiver to TX1 on RF1. RF1 also has the additional option for TX4, which you can use. And so you really, for RF1, you really don't need to use RX3 or TX3. Uh, but in the beta build code, you're going to want to use RX3 for Spectrum and any non-inverted protocol. So Spectrum, IBUS, etc. Uh, and you'll want to use TX1 with the pa inverted pads, pads bridged for any SBUS inverted protocol. In addition, there are some new pads on this side. Originally you had a ground and a 5 volt pad and then a TX6 and an RX6. On this one, I don't know if you can see it. But it's actually got an NSS pad, a SCK pad, a MISO, and a MISO, uh, a MISO and a MOC uh, pad. Basically, the MISO and the MOSI are still TX6 and T, uh, RX6. They're just named differently because we're going to be adding some functions for those. Uh, but these two pads are new, and you'll learn more about those when the features that are for those pads come out. Uh, the rest of the pads all remain the same. There's two other, really it's just one other thing that was changed on this board. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty obvious what the difference is. Here we have two extra capacitors that were added to the board in order to filter out 30 PDB power supplies. So what that will do is that will actually remove some extra noise that can be caused by these noisy power distribution boards uh, and gives your board a cleaner, more stable supply of power. Now I'm going to show you how to solder this up. So of course you're going to want a soldering iron with a semi-thin tip. Uh, you don't want it to be too thick but you don't want it to be too tiny either because you want that heat transfer. So what I always pretend my pads, and it's pretty easy to do. Um, so I'm going to be setting this up for S bus protocol for the Tyrannus. Uh, I'm also going to be setting this up on 
RF1 because that's all I'll, I'll fly anymore. Uh, but anyway, so what I do is I just pretend the pads. This is motor four pad. And I usually like to pretend the top and the bottom to get that good solder to flow through on both sides. And then, of course, I'm going to tend the two uh, power pads, which are right here. And then, let's see. Here's the uh, pads that you're going to want to solder for your S-Bus. You're going to want to solder the ground pad that's right here. The VCC pad, which is power. And then I'm going to solder TX4. Uh, and TX1. And I'm just going to show you how to set up both of those. But I'll probably use TX1. Because uh, you I only need one of them for right now. But here I'm going to select my power. So if you can see, this is 5 volts, VCC, and I'm just going to bridge those, put my soldering iron on both of those. And then for the inverted, I'm just going to invert TX1 and put my solder on the both of those pads, just like that. And then I'm going to do the same for inverted TX4, uh, just so you can see what that looks like. So there you have it. These are all bridged. And I didn't get any solder on either on the pads that aren't supposed to be bridged with that. You want to make sure you're careful about that on only bridging the pads that need to be bridged. Let me finish up the M3 or my motor my motor pads. And that's it. Now I'm just going to bridge these or uh, solder these pads up top. I usually mount my flight controller upside down uh, and then solder to the closest corner. You can only do that in RF1 though uh, because otherwise in, in the beta build code you're going to have to solder to the motors that they're supposed to be on when it's right side up. Um, but there you have it. These are all tinned up and now it's just a matter of connecting things which I'll show you how to do in, in the build.